Hey guys, Bag of Tips here, and I thought I'd make this little spontaneous video as something really cool has dropped, and I want to give you guys a bit of a rundown on how it all works. Now, the reason why I'm making a quick video rather than putting this in in my template videos is because this is very much a system agnostic kind of thing. So it's not something I want to put into here simply because with the whole if it doesn't fit your system, it's going to kind of be more fluff and you're just going to end up removing it. So I'm just going to quickly walk you guys through on how we can actually, one, actually judge distances from one settlement to another. But on top of that, how we can put these into our notes so we can automatically look at the distances and calculate the time between them. Now I'm going to be using Pathfinder 2E for my example, simply because that's what I use. But there is also a Dungeon Dragons 5E that you could use as well. If you're going to need other systems right now anyway, you're going to have to look into making your own systems for that. Or perhaps later down the line, some more systems may come out. However, we won't be rambling a bit anymore. We're going to go ahead and look into this. So, if you've got all my templates and plugins already, you already have one of the two plugins we're going to be using today, which is Obsidian Leaflet. However, what we're going to need to do is actually get another plugin called MetaBind. So we'll go ahead and get those now, so they are ready for later. So we just want to go to the settings, and we're going to go to community plugins and browse. And then we want to just look for MetaBind. Now as you can see, I've got it installed, but you'll just want to go ahead and install it yourself. And then click Enable. And then that'll be ready for us in a little bit. In the meantime though, what I want to start on is actually Obsidian Leaflet. Because what we want to do is if we look at... Now this is a sneak peek of my Kingdoms template. So you guys are getting a little bit of a little preview here. However, as you can see, this is my Kingdom map that I've currently got here. Currently got some indicators of things going on. A few of bits and bobs. But we're kind of wanting to look at the more specific details within this. So if we actually go and look at the coding behind it you'll see all the bits of information throughout here. Now, a lot of this stuff is pretty simple. If you don't know about Obsidian Leaflet, essentially with the ID, you essentially, this is what is appropriate to this map. So you could have 20 versions of this map on in your notes, but this ID is important because it tells you what map this is and the ID. So you could have one for daytime one for nighttime for example i don't know why you'd want to do that but hey the more the merrier on what you want to do with your maps moving on from there you can do things like locking pins you can um, set it so you can't use the scroll wheel to zoom one of the more important ones is with the actual image this is where you're going to be putting the actual image of your map and then more importantly what we're going to be looking at here is the bounds and then not so much the height and width, because this is kind of just telling you on the height and width of what's in the note itself. If you're going to be using my template, these should already be set up for you automatically, so you shouldn't need to worry about this. But if you do want to edit it for your own preferences, it is here as well, as well as a bunch of other things down here also. However, let's go ahead and just look at this though. So the bounds and this link here called use this link. This is what we're going to be using because right now if you guys was to put in a a, a map of your own whoops and just start using it let me turn off edit mode just for a moment here and you went and got this uh, measuring tool so if you was to hold down left alt and left click this would just be a random increment of a number it wouldn't be accurate to what you're wanting so as you can see if i was to come over here and do from not to 100 that goes to exactly 100 on that marker and that's exactly what we're going to be doing here so to get this to line up we're going to go ahead and come and click on this link here which goes ahead and brings us onto this now this is a little calculator to kind of work out some of these uh, mathematical equations I will have to give a shout out for both this and the travel calculator to Josh Pluckett one of the big content creators and essential helpers within the tabletop RG community links will be down below to some of this um, stuff as well so keep a lookout for that 
But essentially all this tool allows us to do is look at the height and width of the actual uh, image itself. And from there, we put in the measurements of um, exactly what is the amount of pixels between what distance we're wanting. And then it gives us the bounds and also either for the center spot as well along here. So let's have a look at that. Let me move this over here just for one moment. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and open this in a image editor of our choice. This could be GIMP or PhotoP or any other variations of these. If you have Photoshop, that works just as well. And we're going to do a few quick things here just to kind of get the information that we're wanting. So the first one is we're wanting to do is go to image and then the canvas size. And then already this gives us the width and height. So we're going to go ahead and bring this over like so. And we're going to see the width is 8192. And the height is 5506. So putting that information in already is going to start giving us a bit of information for our bounds and for our center point. And if we move this over, we'll go ahead and just get those last ones so we can actually get this even more fine tuned. So we're going to go ahead and close this. We have all the information when we need there now. And then what we need to do is go ahead and get the measuring tool. If you're using um, Photopy, that's going to be the ruler just where the eyedrop is. And then we're going to come down here to where we have our indicator. And then we're going to start from zero and go all the way over to 100. Now, it's a bit hard to see on the actual indicator itself, but as you can see, I'm just dragging along. And then in the top uh, left, you can see the numbers incrementing. And we're looking at that length one. So that length one is telling us 2486 pixels. So 2486. So if we bring this back over, we can say in pixels, that is 2486. And the measurement for that is actually 100. So 100 miles. And as you can see, it's going to go ahead and change what's up here and with the bounds and for the center spot. And then also for the distance down here, it's going to go ahead and tell us exactly um, the points here as well. So coming back over now to the map in Obsidian, you can see the data wise, we have set in the 221.92, which is basically what we got for the height just there. And for the width as well, 330.18, which is essentially what we got again for the width. Coming down to then the to the Latin longitude, as you can see, 110 and 330, which is roughly what we got before for the center point. Now, I did change the longitude on my maps and because I found that was a nicer point for it. But you're more than welcome to keep what you get, change it, play around, see what fits for you. And then lastly, we have the scales, which is set to one, which basically when we come back over to the map, you should hopefully find if everything's gone as intended you'll have from 0 to 100 or whatever the distance you have set up is going to be exactly as you intend, which is great, which means now without doing anything else, you can come from your map and start working out from one town to another exactly how much of a distance it is from one settlement to another. So you can manually work out the distance and the travel time. So with this travel calculator, as I said before, it comes from Josh Pluckett, who is one of the big content creators within the Tales of RPG community of Obsidian. And they've gone ahead and gifted us some of this amazing information over on their website. So as you can see, it kind of gives you what I'm kind of going over in written form, as well as they do have a bunch of other interesting tutorials, which I do recommend you guys checking out. However, it does give us the information of where we can copy and paste from here into our own vaults. So as they say, they go ahead and make a note called by configuration, and then they take that and go ahead and put it into their vault. So if I come over here, I've gone ahead and done that already, done some slight tweaking to it, but it's called travel speed for me, or the travel calculator. And then essentially all you need to do is come in here and then you can set the speed what terrain you're going over the temperature, which then go ahead and makes all the calculations. So as you see days travel here, 
per distance traveled per day. If I was to set this to 25, that would set to 20 miles of 0.4 day travel. If I was to set this to difficult terrain, that would then go up to 0.8, very difficult terrain, 1.2. So already it's going ahead and setting these distances for us by saying how many miles we're wanting to travel, where we're currently going. However, we can then go into one of our notes. So for example, let's say our capital, which is for me is Valdian. And then along the bottom here, you can see I've already got this linked to the travel calculator. And using some of the code that they give to us, we can go ahead and say what town we're looking for, which is just manually us putting the link to the notes, which is, let's say, for example, Felden. Or right, let's just go ahead and make another one just to show you guys. So I'm going to just copy and paste what they give us already over on the uh, link provided. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set this to Mulfia. And then what we want to do is we want to head back on over to the map that we just created. Look where we're going for. So we're going from Valdian over to Mulfia. So I'm going to do left alt. I'm going to come through here. Holding left alt and left clicking. So we're going to look along the road to about here. So which is roughly 40 miles. So if I come back over into Valdian. As we can see here, it says view round and then 27 here for me at the moment. So if I just remove that and put 40 and then go back into viewing this, you'll see I've got Mulfia and with our current de determined travel conditions of 25 feet greater difficulty, you can see that's being set to six days. If I was to come over here and say we're actually traveling at 40 feet on a normal terrain, as you can see, that goes to 1.3. And that is how you can very quickly and easily determine the travel from one place to another with these distances and speeds without really doing much work besides just what we're doing at the initial point here. It is a really superb tool, guys. I cannot um, emphasize this enough on how good this is. I haven't been able to use this in a session just yet since this has just dropped, but I can already foresee how useful this is going to be and saving all of the juggling around of looking for the distances, working out what speed people are going for. It's going to be great. But yeah, that's all there is to it, guys. If you like these kind of videos or want to check out any templates to make your Obsidian Tabletop RPG games any better, I recommend not only checking out my videos where I showcase a bunch of templates that I make, but also actually checking out my Patreon is where I actually house all these templates for you to be able to grab. So you can spend less time making your notes look pretty and actually spending more time focusing on the details that go into them so you can actually run your games. With that being said, guys, I just want to say a quick thanks to my patrons, as for them, it's one of the biggest reasons why I can do this, because it means I can do something I love, giving you guys cool things. In return, you guys are able to help me literally pay for um, board and rent, and also putting food on the table, which I highly, highly appreciate. But with that being said, guys, once again, I really do appreciate you all, and I hope you have a good one. Alright, guys, have a good one. Cheers out. Bye.